Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Frank Torn, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, as we are playing with the Fate of Iberia expansion. So, unfortunately, we will not have a video for a few days, guys. I know that content on the channel has been quite sporadic lately. Of course, I, I did let you guys know that that was going to be expected because of us trying to, to move out of this house and get a new house in another state. Uh, but that's the reason why I am going out of state again to look at look at houses, and, and we've got to get out of this one, guys. We are in some serious uh, financial problems right now. Uh, we cannot afford to live here anymore, so it's it's pretty dire that we get out of here, and soon we've probably got about six months left before we lose everything. Uh, so we have got to really prioritize this. Despite our house's extremely small size, it is worth a lot of money. It's actually worth double what we paid for it now. So we can make a lot of money if we sell this house. Uh, we can fix all of our financial problems if we can just uh, sell the house. So we need to find another house to move to before we can do that. Uh, but yeah, we'll make so much from this that we can put a huge down payment on the new house. Uh, a house will likely be three times the size of this one, and yet we'll owe less money on it than we do this one here, just because houses are a lot cheaper in other states than they are here in Colorado. So we'll owe a lot less money on a much larger house, and then we'll also have uh, plenty of money left over after the down payment to kind of live on during these incredibly rough times right now. Uh, the uh, economy is, is bad, inflation is horrible, gas prices are out of control. Things are really bad and they affect people like us, people who you know don't make as much money as the average American does. We certainly make less than the average American household. And so it's affecting everybody, of course, in every state, uh, but it's it's particularly bad in, in states that are already really expensive. So if we can get out of here, get this household, make the money on it and, and go to a cheaper state, We'll be in a good position and I won't be too worried about it, uh, but right now, yeah, we're not in a good position. We're about to lose everything, so we absolutely have to uh, prioritize this over everything else. And therefore, I'm um, going to be looking at houses this weekend. My wife will be here uh, at the house so she can make any uh, videos public uh, that I record. Unfortunately, I have time to record one episode since I do need to go to bed early, since i got to wake up really early tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be uh, recording this one episode here for Saturday, and thus we will not have an episode on Sunday since I won't be here all weekend. And then on Monday, we we don't typically have an episode. I'm not going to record one when I get back late on Sunday. So we won't have an episode on Monday. And then, of course, Monday is Independence Day, July 4th. And so when I get back, we're just going to celebrate that, have a good day, celebrate the holiday. And uh, thus we won't have an episode on Tuesday either. So unfortunately, the series will not be returning until Wednesday. Uh, but you know, it is what it is, guys. Uh, you know, we're in this position. We, we gotta, we gotta focus on, on getting out of here. So I do apologize that it's gonna be a while. Uh, but it's just, uh, again, it's just kind of a, a bad time right now. Uh, so let's go to jump into today's episode. We'll try and uh, get some stuff done here before we leave. Remember, we just took over with a, a new character here, Sultan Abman. A couple of videos ago, I did ask you guys about changing up our. Uh, title name here and the coat of arms and, and it seems most people want me to do it based on you know wherever our current capital is so if it's if we keep it here then we'll base it off of that or if we were to move it over here which now is a little bit more difficult to do since uh, our brother now has these titles yeah if we wanted to move it over there then we would base the name off of that uh, with the emblem they said you know we could just add in uh, you know something that would represent either a dynasty or uh, just Islam so basically keep the current background of this coat of arms and just add some stuff to it. Make it uh, a little bit more fit our dynasty and our religion. Uh, but if we are going to do that, then we, we need to figure out where we're going to stay. As of right now, it does seem like we're going to be staying here, which I think this is pronounced like Saragusta, right? Saragosta? Yeah, I think that's the way you pronounce it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in there. Because uh, yeah, if this is going to remain our uh, the name of our our kingdom or you know whatever our current uh, primary title is at the time then I should be able to pronounce it correctly so we'll just wait to change that up maybe for another video or two just figure out what what we're doing exactly uh, with our, our capital uh, but let's go and get a lifestyle chosen uh, we're gonna go with the diplomacy so I think this will be the first character we've done the diplomacy lifestyle with in this campaign we have the foreign affairs focus increasing diplomacy uh, we got majesty focus uh, which will give you a little bit of diplomacy and give you prestige or the family focus given diplomacy and fertility. Well, what would we go for? We wouldn't go for majesty being a humble character. So I don't think we'd go for that one. Probably foreign affairs or family. With deceitful, I almost feel like it should be foreign affairs. It's kind of the closest. Yeah, and there's nothing really to indicate that we're really uh, a hardcore family guy. I mean, we don't even have any children. So yeah, I think we're, we're gonna go with the uh, foreign affairs focus, just increased diplomacy. 
as far as which one's more useful, uh, I think it's the least useful for us. Uh, we could use the prestige here, and we could definitely use the fertility. Uh, so it's probably the least useful of the three, uh, but I think it's the one that fits us best. So we'll get that selected. Uh, we also have to fill out our council, uh, all positions essentially. And just take a look at our current wife. I don't know if we looked at this yet. See what bonuses she's giving us. That's uh, two, four, five, six, seven, seven bonuses. So you could switch her over to get more learning. Don't really need the uh, diplomacy. We'll just keep her where she's at though. Just giving us a little bit of bonuses for everything. He's still converting the faith over here. So keep him doing that. Uh, let's go and see what we've got when it comes to our powerful our powerful vassals. So these are the, the five powerful vassals. Uh, our uh, uncle is one of those. It looks like our brother is not in here. Yeah, he's not in here despite all the titles he owns. I really think that's going to end up changing here. Hmm. Maybe we should let this play just a second. Uh, just to go into the next month. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do, guys. I don't know if this will update it all. It might not. But I was thinking that our, our brother should be a powerful... A powerful vassal, because he has so many titles. He has three titles here. And you compare that to, like, some of these other characters here. I mean, they're not even all sheiks. Yeah, two of them aren't even sheiks, so I really think that's going to update. Uh, but one thing we do need to do here, so I can consider uh, opinion when we're selecting who's going to be in these positions, is we're going to go ahead and uh, negotiate alliances with our family members, our uncle here and our brother so not to worry about them rebelling or anything and i don't plan on taking their titles so uh, i don't know if that would really fit our character i don't think he would take their titles uh, but as a deceitful person he might just assassinate them even with an alliance yeah i think that's the way he would handle anything is uh through assassinations through intrigue rather than through uh you know directly confronting them uh, you know he's not a coward or anything uh, but yeah, I, I just don't think he would go that route. He's a calm guy, you know, willing to take the, the longer route to get what he wants. So yeah, let's go and get uh, these guys appointed. I think uh, this guy's clearly our, our best chancellor choice, but he's also decent at intrigue. And none of these other ones are, are good at intrigue. Well, he's at least somewhat decent at diplomacy. But you know what? We don't really have to appoint uh, this guy and this guy because they're just, they're not that important. They're just the whaleys. And so we could not appoint those two and instead put somebody in place uh, that might be better at these. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put this guy as our chancellor. Keep him on the domestic affairs. We want a really good steward. We need to make more money. And just so happens that one of those whaleys is, is a good steward. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go and assign him here. That might have been the guy who was there before. I'm not sure. Then we got our, our marshal. And it doesn't look like any of the powerful vassals are good marshals. However... Our uncle, I would like to give him a position, and that's what he's best at. So we might go ahead and assign him to this position. Though he will be allied to us, so he won't be able to act against us. And his opinion won't be as important. And of course, being allied with him will help improve that opinion some. So we don't have to put him in place if we just want somebody who's good. If we want to get like a really good marshal here. Which makes sense. Again, I don't know if we should ri uh, raise uh, peasant leaders up to the marshal position. I don't think that really makes a whole lot of sense to do it that way. So I think the better way to do it is instead just put this guy in place who's not a peasant leader. So yeah, we'll make him the marshal. And as for Spymaster, again, we don't really have anybody who'd be good for this position. This is that one sheik who we got that title for. He used to be, uh, you know, underage. He's now 16 years old and rolling in his own right. And uh, he's not very good, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't see us putting him in any of these positions just because his skills are so terrible. So I'll put somebody else in place instead. Could put her in place, I guess. 17 Intrigue. You're not going to get any better than that. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll assign her to the Spy Master position. She doesn't really like us all that much. She'll probably want to improve her opinion a bit. Yeah, because we don't want the uh, Spy Master disliking us. So we'll work on her first. And then we also have a Court Event. Let's take a look at this. In the past few days, neighboring Count... I have no idea how to say that. He has been visiting my court on his way to some holy site or something. Since his arrival, he has been outshining me with his generosity towards my own courtiers, who have all been lapping up his gold with no dignity. I can't help but scoff when I see him surrounded by my adoring, my adoring courtiers for the umpteenth time. 
my courtiers. So essentially we're super jealous of this guy and the attention he's getting. I don't know if this really makes a whole lot of sense for us being a, uh, a humble character. And, and you can see that that is going to result, the top option here would result in us gaining stress because we're humble, uh, as would this one. So again, as a humble character, this event, uh, yeah, I just don't think most of these options make sense for us. Uh, I don't think we'd say this one. We could instead say I should take advantage of his silly generosity too. Maybe this one. Because we are deceitful. To lie and deceive is in our nature. And that seems like a calm reaction as well. And uh, it doesn't really go against our our humble nature. We could also do this last option which just gets us some, some court grandeur. Uh, but this one here, it's an entry challenge. And we can try and convince him to give us some money. We might fail. We might do that. Yeah, I mean, we could do that one. I, I think either one of these would work for us. Just really which one we want to take. And the court grandeur, we're just going to lose that. It'll just tick down anyway. So, yeah, I guess we'll go for this one. See if we can't succeed, which we did. So we just got 50, 50 gold. So that's helpful. Uh, we would not be holding court right now. We are currently involved in this war here. Uh, so I'd like to, to focus on that. And make sure we still have somebody commanding here. We do. And make sure there's nobody better. Looks like he would be... He's decent with his rough terrain expert, but I think we had put this guy in charge before, didn't we? Yeah, I guess he got removed because, yeah, it's, it's better having that unyielding defender. All right, so we're just waiting to get the, which we already have it up, uh, so we're not waiting for anything now. So let's just go and get our troops marching over here. And once they've gotten all together, we'll attack and see if we can win. Uh, I, I believe we should be able to. I, sh I think we should get a have a successful ba uh, battle there, victory. We got our alliances set up. Excellent. Now, I have had several people ask me why I didn't call on our allies. Something we could have done to get some assistance for this, but man, would that be embarrassing. We're here fighting a one-county character, and uh, we need to ask for assistance. That's pretty bad. I think that would just be very embarrassing. I mean, he's a humble character, so he might be willing to do that. But, of course, he just took over, and the, the war is about to be over. Or hopefully, we should be able to win this. Uh, so this is a espionage event, Unbeliever. So while performing her duties as my spy master, TD has uncovered a secret held by Count Rodrigo. It seems as if he might be starting to see the truth, the truth of the false god, God. Of course, his fellow Catholics are unlikely to be as understanding as me. Alright, so we can say uh, the sign of a weak soul that he's an unbeliever. I don't think we'd want to... I mean, you know what? We're not uh, a zealous character anymore, so maybe we would use... Use it against him. Yeah, I suppose we could use it against him and uh, go ahead and blackmail him for his non-believer, because uh, that's the type of thing our character would do here. Now this might form a rivalry with him, and there's also the chance that uh, he won't accept it. 55% chance, but he's not one of our vassals or anything. You know, he's over here in Castile. They might be able to use it if we can get that hook on him. And there's not too much of a use of, of revealing it rather than uh, making use of it. All right, so let's go and attack here. It does say we will probably win. Uh, they have that higher quality. They got the defensive buildings. They got the mountains. That's going to be a tough fight here. But he has refused our blackmail. And so we'll really just go ahead and reveal it. There's no real advantage of that for us, but we'll do it anyways. He did make the threat, so you kind of got to live up to your threats. So let's see if we win. As of right now, it doesn't look like we'll win. As far as the advantage goes, we do have the advantage bonus here. So I think I think we're going to get the victory there. Uh, one of our vassals was injured in the battle. And it looks like he is likely going to die. He was severely injured, disfigured. It happens. Uh, which uh, location is he in? Uh, we need to look at his title here. Alright, so he's the Count over here. Or not the Count, uh, the Baron, excuse me. He's the Baron right here. Alright, so people get injured in war, it happens. I don't know how he was in regards to our other knights, like how good he is. Of course, we won't be able to tell very well now. Doesn't look like he was that great. Now, he wants to pay homage to us, so of course we're going to accept that. Make a, well, we didn't get any money, but we did get some prestige and renown and some court grandeur. That get us up to the next level. Uh, we need to look at, I mean, right now we're broke. We don't have any money, but we need to look at uh, changing up some of our court amenities. 
see if we can't get some extra bonuses there. So we did win this battle. Defeat of the Templar Knights. And looks like he's gotten worse. It's an infected wound now. So he's likely going to die. Uh, I think that will... Yeah, that results in his heir coming in. So we don't have to, to put him in place or anything. Just kind of changes who our vassal is here. And seems like he's worse. Yeah, he's a drunkard. Yeah, he seems like a worse character, unfortunately. It happens. Anything here we need to be aware of? Oh, yes, uh, the marriages. I completely forgot that he didn't have any other spouses yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, because remember, our current spouse is 36. And we still don't have an heir. Which isn't a huge problem that results in our brother inheriting. And that might actually be... Uh, the better option, uh, simply because we'd get all of his all of his titles would come back to us, uh, so that'd be nice. But I don't think that's what our character would do. Just let his brother inherit, maybe. I mean, he's is humble. But yeah, we we need to to ensure we're not losing the piety, so we got to do the marriages anyway. And um, you know, it just makes sense with not having any heirs that we would uh, try and arrange a marriage for a younger woman. We don't want to do matrilineal. Uh, so yeah, let's just take a look, see what we can find here. We probably don't want to wait too long. We'll leave uh, this open, but yeah, I don't think we want to wait too long. She should be fertile. She should be Muslim. We'll look for traits, since we are attempting to have children in this, this marriage. Uh, we don't want her to be lowborn. And let's just see what, what inheritable traits are available. Uh, but this isn't super important. So looking at some of all skills... She's a bit older. She's beautiful, though. She's got the very high diplomacy. Uh, we also want to find somebody who would make a, a better uh, primary spouse because, I mean, she boosts the, the diplomacy, something we're already good at. While the things that we lack in, she is not good at. Uh, so that's something to consider as well, uh, that we probably want somebody who's got some, some good stats uh, make up for the, some of the ones that we are lacking in. So she's young. She's also intelligent. So might be able to get uh, that into our dynasty. So she makes a lot of sense. Her skills aren't great, but she's good at uh, intrigue. But maybe this will be the, the baby-making spouse. And then maybe we'll have a different one for uh, help us out, help ruling a spouse to assist us. So yeah, I think she would be the best option here. Yeah, these are not as high of a ranked trait. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and bring her in. And then we'll we'll do a search. And this will result in an alliance over here. Okay, so quite far away. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and arrange this marriage. And then we need a third spouse. And with her, we'll uh, look for somebody who could probably be a primary spouse, I suppose. Though it might, might, might not make sense to... To replace your your wife and friend she is a friend of ours it might not make sense to replace her as a primary spouse even if we were to find somebody better so that's something to consider uh, but let's go and change this up say we don't need inheritable traits go ahead and look at some of all skills and what we're really wanting is somebody with the the high stewardship that might be young enough to also still have children and so what i'm thinking is uh She's a member of our dynasty here. Probably shouldn't marry her. So I don't think it's it one of these two. I mean, they're they're older. In the 30s, she won't likely have children. But she could still. 33 is not too old. I've seen women in their 40s in this game have children. And she's got that really good stewardship. So I think it makes sense to do the marriage with her. Because again, she's not too old. And maybe we should sort this based on stewardship so that's what that's the one i really really want and just see what other options there are available it looks like all the stewards are older ladies okay so yeah we'll just go with her uh the 33 year old she's the youngest so we'll arrange the marriage uh, the marriage with her and uh hopefully it's it's successful there so we gained a level of devotion and we also captured uh a valuable hostage the actual king here and so that means we don't have to do the siege, which is awesome because uh, not only would that take nine months, but this army here would continue to attack us over and over again. And, uh, you know, we might lose more knights and more men, and it's just best if we can get this done with. So this is the current battle. Just take a look, see how all of our knights did. Our half-brother did the best. 38 kills here. Uh, he's actually pretty decent. Remember, this is the one that's an heir, and despite being a coward, 
Look at that prowess. It's 17. It was 15, but he just earned the Aspiring Blade Master. Uh, but then he got wounded and lost two. But that's going to plus three. I'm pretty sure it was 15 when we, when we looked in here a minute ago. Uh, but the math doesn't add up here. Because yeah, you got a plus three, so that puts you at plus 18. But then you got wounded, so that would have brought you down to 16 rather than 17. So I'm not sure. But the point is, is that uh, he's our probably our best knight. And he did great in this battle here. Uh, he was wounded. Hopefully he heals all right for that. And then we got the uh, peasant leader here. He was the second best. All right. Uh, so our uh, brother and heir continues to improve. Now uh, let's go and enforce our demands. And we conquered that. Again, it was far more difficult to conquer that than, it, than expected uh, due to the Templar Knights joining. But we got it done. Uh, we're directly controlling that county. Uh, which we can manage without any issues uh, because we are under our current holding limit. Do we need to increase the control here? We do. All right, so maybe once we finish over here, well, I guess we don't directly control that anymore, so it would make more sense to move them. Uh, we can't move them there right now, but let me just take a look. We might want to, to move them over here since we can do that. It'll be quicker to get this up as well. Uh, the control's not quite as low. So boost it there, and then we'll do over here. So let me just take a look, see if there's anything here we need to be aware of. Uh, of course, we don't care about that. We still have too few spouses. Oh, because the, uh, the marriages haven't been accepted yet. And we can now create the Kingdom of Navarra, which is actually a negative, because if we end up having... I mean, we can create it, and there's no reason not to right now, but if we end up having multiple children, then that will separate the kingdoms. Uh, and, and that's going to happen regardless of whether or not we, we create the title as long as we have our current uh, inheritance law. And unfortunately, we cannot change up our succession law right now because we don't yet have those innovations. So yeah, we're kind of stuck with the Confederate partition for now, and we can't even do anything to, to try and, you know, ensure that we get this innovation soon since we don't control the innovations. Uh, we can take a look see what he's currently working on. All right, so he's working on Bayless, which would give another domain holding limit. Let's just take a look at how close we are to getting that. Uh, I believe we just got the Arch Saddle, so that allows us to record, re recruit the Armored Horseman. Uh, but yeah, he's working on this now, and it seems he'll get it in eight years. So it's going to be a while, guys. So yeah, I don't know when we'll be able to change up our Inheritance Laws. Probably not anytime soon. Uh, we did form that alliance. Excellent. And we are standing to inherit all those titles from our brother. And of course, we have a bunch of powerful vassals not happy with us, since they do not have a position in the court. Uh, so I did want to take a look and see if our, our brother has been moved uh, over here at all as a powerful vassal. He has. Okay, so I was, I was expecting he would be. And he's okay at some of these positions here. Yeah, I mean, I could even see making him the marshal. Because, yeah, his marshal would be 12. Of course, we'd piss off this guy. I think that's okay. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and put him in place here. I didn't do it before because he wasn't a powerful vassal, but I knew he was going to be, so I should have just did it. Uh, but yeah, we're we'll going to put him in place. Piss off this guy who we just put into this position. But yeah, now our, our brother will be happier since he has a position with us in our court. Though that does mean it's going to take longer to increase the control in these areas. Uh, we're going to be moving to a new phase soon, the hostility phase, we're at 912 there, uh, so very close to 1,000. So the young sheik here, he wants us to get him another county, take that, but that's not the way we're going to do it. Uh, we are going to declare war on him pretty soon, but we're not going to declare war for just one county, we're going to declare war for the entire uh, kingdom here, uh, all three counties. But we'll say this when the time, when the time is right, because I don't know how this will work if I declare war and take all of those. I don't know if that will be given to him, if that will satisfy it. Probably not, because you would think that you'd have to do the war to specifically get that for him. But again, I'm not entirely sure. So because I, I don't know how it works, we'll go with this one. And unfortunately, we'll get the opinion boost with him, but that's okay. Uh, our court grandeur has decreased. We just had that temporary bonus there. As far as when we're gonna start the war, I mean, I guess we have enough money in our treasury to start that now, uh, our troop numbers are 
you know, about as high as they're going to get here. You can get a few more levies, but that's not that big of a deal. Uh, we can take a look and see who he's allied with. Uh, so, yeah, he doesn't have any allies, just one of his own vassals. Uh, like, less than 1,400 troops here. Could, of course, get the help from the, the Templar Knights again, so that would cause us some serious issues. Yeah, I think we might go ahead and, and do this war now and get all this conquered. Now, it does say here that we're, once again, controlling six counties. It looks like we also got this one. Okay, I see what's going on here. Uh, we have a, a barony. So we need to go ahead and grant this one out here. It's a temple holding. And we could just do somebody of the local culture to try and improve the acceptance. And I, I think that's what we're going to do, though. I am tempted to actually reward one of our knights here. Uh, somebody who served us well that doesn't already have a title. Uh, so let's just take a look. That's what I try and do in the roleplay series because I feel like that's more accurate. Uh, that is how uh, rulers actually gave out titles. It was to their favorites, as to people who had, had done something for them. Uh, so it makes more sense for us to do it that way, to grant it out to, to good knights. And, and here we have a knight who, you know, he was once a, a peasant leader who rebelled against us. But he served us for a little while now, fought in, in, in battle with us, and, and did well. And so I think it's about time to reward him. So we're going to make him uh, the Baron over here. All right, so he's down here. So yeah, we'll give him in this position. And he's still our vassal, so he'll still be one of our one of our knights. And unfortunately, we lost our antiquarian, so we will want to go ahead and put somebody else in place there. Uh, but yeah, man, we're, we lost a lot of money uh, when our, our last character died since he was a stewardship focus. And so yeah, I don't, I don't know if we want to change up the, the court amenities right now. I don't know if we can afford it, particularly with us going to war. We might want to wait until after this war is done. Now, we could have kept that title uh, for ourselves. However, we're going to be taking these three soon. So yeah, I didn't feel like it was necessary. Uh, but let's go and put somebody into the antiquarian position here. Just whoever's the best, which it looks like there's nobody who'd be really good at this position. It's essentially one of these two. Our half-sister, or one of our knights, our, uh, our Ferris's. I guess we'll put her in position, because she's a relative. Alright, so... Are we ready for this conflict? Do we want to go ahead and do this now? Could wait until the end of winter, so we're not getting any penalties. I suppose that makes sense. So let's just wait to the end of winter, and then we'll do the, the conflict. Uh, see what we got over here. So we learned of another secret. Uh, so let's go ahead and make use of it. Blackmailer. And not very high chances of succeeding here of them accepting. And she refused again, so we'll just keep on revealing it. And maybe he'll arrest him. Uh, he'll end up uh, arresting everybody in his court. Uh, we don't have any prisoners ourselves. I guess we didn't capture anybody there except for the king, which he was released once we uh, ended the war. Uh, in regards to creating a hybrid culture, I do think that's something we're going to do. The question will be, which culture are we going to mix with? I'm not entirely sure. It really depends on you know what's most dominant in our lands, which probably be Catalan, you'd think. Yeah, Aragonese, maybe we'll just uh, completely convert them out. But if you're looking at the uh, the rest of the Iberian Peninsula here, might be other cultures that would be better. Maybe Castilian? I don't know. We won't be able to do that until we have to reconquer that, of course. But yeah, it's something to consider which one we want to create the hybrid culture with. Uh, we're able to improve her opinion. Excellent. See, so yeah, I'm not entirely sure which one. I guess it would really depend uh, on which culture we prefer, like the, the bonuses of that culture. Uh, so here's the, the Catalan culture. Uh, that's one that we already have. So I guess it's one you definitely want to keep since both cultures have that. So this is what the uh, Catalan culture has and if we take a look at the Castilian culture, this is what they got. So yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking, which culture we should create the hybrid one with. with. Of course, with this one We'd have to conquer some of that territory first. Uh, this one we'd be able to do sooner, uh, though. Not sure if we can do it right now due to the lack of of prestige here. Yeah, I think currently the prestige is the only thing that would be stopping us right now from doing it. Yeah, that's something to, to consider. 
but not something we can do right now. And I uh, really got to decide which, uh, which culture we want to merge with or mix with. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, attack him now. Uh, I went a little bit further than I intended to. Let's go and declare war. Make sure he doesn't have any other allies. He does not. I mean, we could have built up our troops a bit more. Probably should have, I suppose. Uh, but it's too late now. I'm not waiting any longer. So we'd probably want to use this one here. It'll only be 270 prestige there. And uh, take over all three counties. Let's declare our war. And go ahead and move our rally point. Which I didn't know that you can just right click to move this. Yeah, so much easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and raise the troops up. We need to slow this down. Uh, might have missed our opportunity to attack here. Is this who we want to command? Maybe. You can't put this guy in position. He's not in our court. We'd have to recruit him. He's actually decent, though. I wonder how much he'd cost. It'd cost 60 gold. Would he be a good knight? Not really. He's an older guy, too, so you're not going to be able to use him for very long. So probably don't want to hire him. Uh, we can't put him in place because he's already commanding another army. Let's see, in his own war or something? Yeah, he's currently in a in a conflict over here. Is that our ally he's fighting? He's been injured as well. He has had a daughter. But we're still set as his primary heir, so if he dies in this, in this war, then we'll inherit all his titles. Uh, but yeah, th this is clearly the best option. I, well, I guess there's the traits to consider. Yeah, and in that case, we'd want to put him in charge again like we did with the last conflict. Uh, so let's go ahead and attack here. Uh, looks like we won't get there in time. Could uh, fight him in the mountains, I suppose. And we do outnumber him by so much that it's probably our best uh, option here if we can't attack him there. That uh, would have been best if we could attack him there, but uh, yeah, we'll just have to fight him in the mountains. We have um, over three times the, the troops that he does. Or actually, it's, it's just about three times the troops that he has. But yeah, should be a nice, easy conflict, even with the, the mountain penalties there. And he wants to negotiate, uh, negotiate an alliance with us, our nephew here. All right, so he owns territory over there. I see. He's not part of our dynasty, though. Yeah, I don't think we would do that right now. Let's not get involved over there. Who knows what kind of conflicts we might get called into that. Uh, we could, of course, call our own allies in here, but not necessary. Uh, so this is that boy. Who is this here? He's one of our vassals, and he's a cousin. Okay, he's the one that took over right there. I see. So we could, could create an alliance with him. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't know why I was thinking it was in that area. Uh, anything else we need to be aware of over here? Looks like that's a no. Alright, so with this battle won, we'll then go after his capital. I mean, it's not won yet, but just a bounce. And we discovered another unbeliever. Alright, we'll keep on blackmailing in the hope that we'll get some hooks over here. But yeah, she, she's finding secrets left and right, doing a very good job. And it keeps getting refused. Of course, that's not her fault. But yeah, we'll just keep on revealing him. And again, maybe the King Castile is arresting them all. Uh, so let's go after the capital next. We will take a look see how our knights did. Alright, so again, our uh, brother is the, the best. We killed several of their knights. Well, it looks like that was his son. So yeah, so he lost his son. Now he does have, it wasn't his primary heir, but yeah, he does have another son here, but must be devastating for him. So he's dealing with that right in the middle of this conflict. So yeah, we'll attack over here and we'll just keep our troops together. We could go chase him down and stuff to, to try and win another battle. Uh, I suppose we could do that. And it's not going to make this any faster with the siege. We might go ahead and chase him down, I suppose. Because uh, you never know who you might end up capturing in those battles or killing. Uh, the lure of language. So ruling the multicultural Sultanate of Aragon comes with its own set of challenges. Foreign subjects often feel alienated when they cannot speak their native tongue in court, breeding resentment. My vassal, Walia Agnes, suggests that I could significantly improve relations with my Catalan subjects by learning to speak their language alongside my own. I guess that is something we should work on. I mean, we're right now improving opinion 
with her. But I'm wondering if we won't get like a boost to doing this since we have this event here. And we can always do this later. So we can say, time to hit the books. This is a learning challenge. Oh, we can just straight up learn to speak the language. Yeah, that does seem pretty useful. Uh, but it's a 52% chance that we fail and gain stress. Instead, we can say, hire a tutor to instruct me. This will cost money, but it's a much higher chance of succeeding. Or we can just say, why bother? Uh, why bother? Yemeni is clearly superior. And we'll gain stress because we're humble. I don't think we'd say that one. And this would be really useful for us as well. Uh, so I think we would do one of these two. And might, might as well go with the one that's going to be most likely to be successful. We're not greedy or anything where we don't want to give any money out. So, yeah, we'll do that one. And uh, I hope we succeed. That's a great way to learn a language is just quickly learning it through an event. Uh, let's go and split these troops up. And uh, we'll chase down those 926 dudes. So probably leave... Yeah, we'll leave a good contingent over here. I'm not entirely sure how large the fort is. It's level three. Okay. So we'll leave a good number of troops here just in case, uh, you know, they try and attack. They get around us somehow. I don't know how that would happen, but it's a possibility, I suppose. Uh, so let's go and split off a new army. And I guess we'll want to leave the besiegers here. That's the best way to do this, I think. Uh, so let's go and leave them. Again, 1,500 is probably enough. That's close to 1,600. All right, so it's going to get this guy running over here to try and attack them, and then we'll put somebody else here, preferably somebody who will decrease the size, or, or excuse me, decrease the length of the siege. Doesn't look like we have anybody with that trait, though. Uh, so we'll just put this guy in charge instead. All right, so we'll see if we can't chase these guys down. I don't know that we're going to want to engage with them in the mountains now that we don't have the overwhelming troop numbers. We've still got two times their number. And somebody is plotting against us. Okay, so we might want to change her up to find this plot. You know, let's look for one more secret before we move her over. Because we haven't really had any success over there or while we keep finding the secrets. Let me see if I can attack. Here we can't. If we keep finding the secrets, somebody will accept our blackmail attempts. All right, so we'll go over here and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can beat him. It does look like he wants to stay there, which makes sense for him his best chance of winning and this is just a probably win it's got a thousand dudes he has the more men in arms counters but we got the uh, commander trades more soldiers and the better army commander so I guess we'll, we'll do it we have two times the number mountains are big penalties but uh, we should still be able to win here I would think uh, but that has been so inaccurate in this campaign I'm wondering if that got broken a patch or whatever because uh, yeah it just seems really inaccurate at least in this campaign and uh, we were able to learn the Catalan language. All right, that's fantastic. Yeah, that was time well spent. So with this, we'll get 100 Diplomacy Lifestyle points. Learn the language, get a bunch of opinion increases. Uh, over here, we can say, such a fascinating culture, I want to learn more. And then we can adopt the culture, which we don't want to do that. So yeah, we'll go with this. And um, yeah, that's that's great, man. Can we now learn, uh, learn their language? And I, I believe we can learn one more. Yeah, we can learn one more here. So we should probably uh, attempt to learn the Iberian Vulgar language next. I don't know what our chances of success would be, but we're still trying to boost the opinion with the, the Spy Master. I think that's important. We don't want her to act against us. All right, so with this battle won, which we did clearly get a victory there, that'll up the uh, score a little bit. Take a look, see how these knights did. Killed another one of their characters here, another one of their knights. Uh, do we want to go ahead and chase them down? I guess they don't really have anywhere else to go. I'm trying to get this army selected here. Uh, though we would take attrition going over there. So probably just go back to our own territory for now. And they might end up attacking down there anyways try and save their their capital which despite their lower numbers they would actually win that battle since these are just the uh the levies so yeah moving down here i think would be wise though it looks like that's not what they've decided to do probably because we're neighboring that province now uh we'll see what they do if they start moving over this way again we'll go after them but if they stay there we'll just leave them there and just get the siege done uh which won't be done for another four months here so let's go and speed this up a little bit and yeah we're getting closer and closer towards moving to the next stage 949 at this point. 
Uh, he did raise up another army of troops here. Looks like some mercenaries. All right, so that's not good. So we can fight just the mercenaries and likely win, but if these troops come and assist, which you'd assume they would, this might not be a victory anymore. But letting them get together would be bad as well, so. All right, so he is coming to help. Yeah, we'll just have to see what happens here, guys, uh, and hope that we, we win that. That could be a disaster for us, though. We'll just have to see, because, yeah, they'll be getting the, the mountain bonuses there. But it'll take them time to get here. So we'll have a little bit of time of just fighting that one small army. Uh, so Rodrigo died. So I need to get him replaced as steward, which is unfortunate because he was our best steward, our best option that we had available here. Uh, none of the current powerful vassals would be good at this. And we want the best character here for the job, uh, which would be her, Walia, Agnes, the one we just had that event about. She is possessed, so I don't know if she's the best person to have in the council, but yeah, we'll put her in position. She's a, she's a vassal, and, and clearly nobody is even remotely as good as she is. Let's put her in position there, uh, which we want to make sure we have the best steward possible, because a member of these uh, promotion of culture just takes so, so long to do, as it is. All right, so let's hope we win this battle here. Again, I can't say. Uh, they're attacking us now, so it's saying we win decisively. Because we'd be defending the mountains, but I don't think they'd get there in time. Yeah, so we're still going to have the penalty. So I don't know if we're going to win here, guys. We do have the negative two. We barely have more troops. Uh, but we do have a board game. So we're over here losing real battles, but uh, we have the chance to engage in a board game. Uh, now, this will be over likely before they can... Well, I don't know, because they're right next to it. Yeah, if we don't get this done soon, then that won't win. Won't be a victory either. So the war is not going well. I mean, it really depends on what happens with this battle, of course. But uh, but yeah, we got the option to play some chess with one of our vassals here. And yeah, we're not leading the troops ourselves. Uh, so yeah, I think we would accept it. No reason not to. Uh, so yeah, let's go and accept. Uh, this is um, the possible outcomes. If your opponent wins the wager... Uh, then he'll gain uh, an opinion increase, and he'll lose stress. Well, we'll gain stress. Uh, if we win the ra wager, then the opposite reactions happen here. Except for he loses, uh, excuse me, gains a lot more stress. Probably because he's the one who proposed it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to accept it. And I haven't done one of these yet. Whaley of Dala is already waiting to begin our little chess match. Sat waiting with competitive grimace writ large across his features. We're neck and neck, though neither of us is even close to victory. I wish matters of coin were as easy as playing chess, remarks my opponent. I'd be swimming in silver. So we can say chess like war is all a matter of logistics. This will be a martial challenge. He instead say it takes a subtle mind to play chess, or I know the rules of chess like the back of my hand. So I probably just want to go with uh, the one you're best at, I assume, which would be a diplomacy one, but there is no diplomacy options. Yeah, diplomacy isn't really going to help you in chess much. Um, so, as far as what we got there, you know, Marshall's equal to learning. Intrigue is, is uh, clearly our best option. And, you know, as a deceitful character, it makes sense that we'd go with that. So, that's what we'll go for and see how, how we do. So, our match marches on. Abdallah continuing with a frankly hilariously pompous strategy. Naturally, my techniques cunningly foil my opponent. We're neck and neck, though neither of us even close to winning. Uh, see, this is why I like chess, opines my opponent. No skulking around, no lying, just a fair game of wits. One where, well, so we can say a strong sword arm is a strong die arm. Uh, innocent whistling, or you think you can outthink me, and we're going to keep on going with the intrigue. So we continue to foil him. I wonder if it has anything to do with their own traits. I mean, I assume that they get the same options here. Uh, but I wonder if you have, like, a defense to it. Like, if you're doing a intrigue challenge... Is it against him? Because it's a challenge, so I think that it's not just about our entry. It'd also be about his, which would explain why we are, uh, you know, cunningly foiling our, our opponents. So we're beating him handily, though neither of us even close to victory. You planned this, didn't you? All but snarls my opponents. Planned to humiliate me with a rigged game. All right, so we're just going to keep on winning, uh, whistling innocently. Uh, our match marches on. Could you ease up on the blatant cheating for a moment? Snarls my opponent. So now he's accusing us of cheating here. And we're going to win the game. Uh, so we'll lose any stress. I don't know if we actually had any stress, though. Uh, I don't think we did. Uh, he's going to dislike us. I don't really got anything for this. Unless we get something from one of these options here. Uh, but th with the roar of triumph, I surge my feet, scattering pieces everywhere. This game of chess is mine. Another fine victory on my indisputable rise towards the role of king of games. And since he has no idea where he went wrong. Uh, so we could say good game. 
and we'll win the match. Uh, or we can instead say, how does it feel to lose, little man, and kind of rub it in. Or we can say, I'd love to play again sometime. Which we're humble, so it makes sense for us to do that, I think. Oh, we'll even lose stress because we're humble. Uh, there's a 96% chance that he'll become our friend. See, I think that's probably one we'll want to do. It is a diplomacy challenge. So, so that's the reason why we, we're going to do pretty well at that. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go, guys. Uh, but we did win this, so because of that, we're at 89%. Uh, we took a prisoner in the siege. Was it a key character? We also seized an artifact. The learn language scheme power. All right, that's a trinket that we definitely want to put in place uh, right now, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so that'll improve our chances of learning languages. We'll be able to pass that down to our, our heirs. Uh, we'll go ahead and send these troops in, though. I don't know if they're going to get there in time. Uh, but if they do, then that will help us uh, help ensure that we win that battle, I think. Uh, we do have people to ransom. Let me just take a look and see if we're getting any points from capturing anybody. We don't. We need to win this battle, essentially, uh, to win the war. Yeah, if we win this, we win the war. So we don't need to keep these prisoners here. Uh, but yeah, there's no real reason to ransom them off right now. I just want to see what's happening in this battle. We keep having these events fire. Uh, a shady discussion. So we've seen this event with a previous character. But, you know, this character is very different and deceitful. I think that character we saw it with was our first one, the honest character. Uh, so I think we're going to have a, a different reaction here. So we can say, I will have them bound and delivered to Nizam, Nizam, uh, which we wouldn't do that as a deceitful character. Uh, we could instead say, if only I could get a bit closer, Intrigue Challenge. Not a good chance. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance of succeeding, but that's not great in uh, paradox terms. Instead say, I must know what they're hiding, whatever the cost. We'll gain some dread, and then we could torture them. Again, I don't think that's the best way for our character to do things. I think we'd probably do this, the Intrigue Challenge even if we're likely to uh, fail, and we did. They spotted us. How embarrassing. All right, so we were winning that battle, I think, even without the additional troops. Uh, but that should secure our victory there. And unfortunately, that night we rewarded is now injured severely. It happens. It happens, guys. Didn't he just come in that battle too? Because I believe he was leading the levies. So he gets there immediately, and I guess he charges forward and gets himself injured. Uh, so she was not able to find any secrets. That's okay, because we were going to switch her out anyways. Switch her over to Disrupting Schemes, which she's already done. Alright, so with that battle won, I think that should be a victory in the war. Not quite. Alright, that's unfortunate. So yeah, now we've got to win another siege, essentially. Or battle him again. I suppose that's probably the best way to go here. Is just go ahead and battle him one more time. Even if we have to take attrition to, to do that. He's probably coming over here. But yeah, I think this is the best way to go. Is just go ahead and battle him one more time. Those are the hills, so it's better to fight in the hills than the mountains. So I think that's what we'll do. Uh, also, I don't think we will take attrition, because now we have control of this. So we might not take attrition this time. Depends on if we have to go through any other locations. I don't think so. Uh, so yeah, we should be able to, to go there. Yeah, we can go there without taking attrition. And again, I think that's where he's going. Uh, so we're going to have to go over here because we can't catch him. But it's fine. We just want to win this this battle here. Oh, now he's switching out, which, uh, oh, that's unfortunate. So now we have to let him lock and then attack. That's the only way to do this. So we'll fight him in the mountains, but we'll, we'll still win this battle. It'll be more costly. That's okay. Uh, this is what we got to do to win it. And it looks like one of our spouses, I'm guessing that's the, that's not the younger one. That's the, the middle-aged one that we have here. She's pregnant now. And we, uh, we'll have a, an heir, which is excellent. I wasn't sure if we would have one or not, despite the, the new spouses. Though, again, I probably would have preferred that she have the child so we can have an intelligent child. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um, so we won this battle here, and thus we have won the conflict. So on the force of demands, we'll take over... It looks like we did not directly control those. We've now made him into our vassal. Okay. So I would have preferred to directly control these. He can demand his conversion. And, you know, while we're not you know, as religious as our father was, more than anything, we're deceitful, and I think we're going to use this as a tactic to 
maybe arrest him. So we're going to demand his conversion, uh, because imprison him right now would be an act of tyranny. So let's go ahead and demand his conversion. He might accept. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll see what he says. As far as like other things we could do, you could just attempt to murder him, uh, but that doesn't give us the title either, though. So let's go ahead and um, see what he says here. So he can't accept. What does he want? He wants a weak hook. Man, I really feel like giving him a weak hook would not be a good idea at all. Look at his intrigue. That is ridiculous. Wow. Now, we're never going to have a high enough opinion to actually make use of that intrigue. In fact, this is more of a threat than anything else. So that would be one reason to try and kill him. Though it would likely be really difficult because of that intrigue and the schemer uh, trait here. Yeah, I think it would be really, really difficult if you attempt to assassinate him. Yeah, I mean, it's only 5% here. I think it's actually much lower. I think that's the lowest it can get. Uh, but I think even if you got agents, you probably wouldn't increase that much. But of course, on top of that, the whole reason why we did this is to get the uh, the crime that allows us to rightfully imprison him, which we do get. And therefore, we can attempt to imprison him, which he'll probably resist. And then we'll have to fight him again in order to take his titles. But I think that's what we're going to do. Leaving this guy alive as a vassal with that intrigue. Zealous, arbitrary, callous character. I'm actually surprised he was even willing to convert Ben. Ben Zealous. But yeah, with the schemer trait. Who knows what else he's working on in his perk tree. He's 59 years old, so he's probably working down another ranch of it. Yeah, I don't see how this would be good, guys. Um, now, we can't go ahead and ransom all the characters that we, uh, we took. But would we want to if they're decent knights? I mean, this guy isn't great. We probably want to keep him anyways. And he's not even willing to, to ransom him. We got this character, Gomez. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to ransom him off either, though it looks like he's from... Oh, okay. He's actually from those mercenaries. But we can't get any money, so it'd probably be better to demand his conversion and recruit him. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So we'll do that with him. And then we have... Oh, is this his daughter? That's his daughter, isn't it? Yep. So that's how we're going to do this, guys. So we could just do this for the 25 gold, of course, but it'd be far better to do it for the favor and get the favor on him, get the hook. Let's turn this down a second. See if there's anything here we need to be aware of. We can transfer the Sheik over to him, but we don't need to do that. Okay, so we'll let him... I don't know if this will be enough. We'll have to see. But now that we have the, the hook on him, we can attempt to use the hook and it wouldn't be enough. Damn. Probably should have just took the money in that case. All right. I was hoping that'd be enough, but as you can see, it's very clearly not. It's only given a plus 30, of course. It's his intrigue that makes it so difficult. And, and this is just one reason why we can't let this character uh, continue to exist this way. So we'll have to imprison him and uh, then fight this this rebellion of his, which he actually has more troops this time, unfortunately. And uh, as far as money goes, I don't think he'll be able to hire any mercenaries. Hey, maybe. But yeah, let's go ahead and attempt to imprison him. It is what it is, guys. He's a criminal. And uh, we'll just have to fight the rebellion one more time. Won't be that uh, in this episode, though. We'll just let the rebellion fire. Uh, of course, we, he accepted. But he called us infidels, but he's not an infidel. Or, or we're not infidels to him anymore, are we? Because uh, he was forced to convert. And... What is this about? Oh, did we just have a, a war declared on us? Yeah, it looks like they did. They declared war on us. Bad time. Uh, since we just started a conflict. I'm sure that probably played a role in his motivations there. So now we have two conflicts going. I guess I could have just went up through here. So we need to get our troops raised up. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, he is going to attack us here, damn it. So now we got to run. <laughs> That's unfortunate. He raised up quicker than we did. So now we're on the run. So we're going to have to stop and um, get the hell out of here. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, he rose up. I shouldn't have risen up right next to him. I didn't think he would attack, though. But it makes sense that he rose up quicker uh, because that's his capital. Our capital is way over here. Uh, so, yeah, now we're in a bad position. We're fleeing. Uh, we're going to have to raise the troops up somewhere else. Maybe over here and then have him flee over that way. Or just somewhere more defensible. Yeah, probably... Um, 
Now you can attack from there, so you don't want to do it right there. Probably right here. And then raise them all up right there. Only four days left, and they come and assist us here. Probably want to shoot over that way, I think. We're just here. Can we get there? We can't. Oh, damn. I messed it up. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, so we're going to lose these 646 and he's going to get some points. Yeah, I let some days progress. Shouldn't have done that. All right, so that's a shame. Um, he might have been attacking us before. Maybe I missed it. And, of course, we can't disband the troops either. Uh, that's not an option since the hostile army's nearby. So that's a bummer. We're going to lose those 646, um, but we'll still outnumber him even with these guys here, and they'll be raised up uh, in time, I think. Uh, but not in time to save this army, I don't think. Yeah, they won't get there uh, quick enough. So he'll get the war score from that. Uh, so what you do want to make sure is you don't have anybody like, good commanding here. Yeah, have somebody else. Maybe somebody who's just going to do a lot of casualties to them. Uh, well, you don't want him to die. I mean, I guess we just got him. He needs to prove himself. Prove himself loyal. <laughs> So we're going to have him in charge of those troops and watch him just end up dying, sacrificing himself. Uh, we probably will call in our allies into this conflict, by the way, as in the fact that we have to fight two, uh, two different countries here now, or two different characters. So it would make sense to go ahead and call in our allies, although he's the ally over here. That would not be that helpful. Are we no longer allied to... Oh, they've broken up. Yeah, they split off over here. Interesting. I wonder if that was inheritance. But yeah, we're not actually allied uh, to them over here anymore, so we have no allies at this point. Okay, I didn't even realize that. We gotta fight it on our own, so we're gonna have to make it happen, guys. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what happens over here. Uh, again, I think we should be able to defeat them there, but yeah, I'm pretty worried about having the two separate armies, even if they are uh, both smaller than ours. I'm gonna fight them uh, each with the possibility of them hiring uh, mercenaries or you know the Templar Knights. Yeah, we're in a we're in a rough position, but I think we should be able to get the victory here, guys. If we're if we're smarter than we've been with these troops here, because that was silly. I shouldn't have rose up right there. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next episode, which remember will not be until Wednesday, so quite some time from now, unfortunately. Uh, you know, with the holiday and then me being gone over the weekend. Uh, but yeah, Wednesday will be when we return with the series. So I'll see you then, and thanks for watching, guys.